Welcome to Business Casual, where entrepreneurs find inspiration to start and grow their online business. Today, I'm hanging out with Jared Polin, who you may recognize from YouTube as Fro Nose Photo. As the name would imply, Jared has a friggin' awesome fro, and he also has a really successful YouTube channel about photography. And today, he's gonna sit down and talk to us about building a successful business using YouTube. Jared, I'm so pumped to be here. Thank you so much. Super pumped. Yeah. So I know you started your channel like eight years ago. Could yeah. you tell us a little bit about what that timeline was like? Like how long did it take for you to start getting like regular views? When I, when I started in, in 2010, it was a totally different world online and especially on YouTube. There were people making videos, but there weren't the, the huge superstars just yet. I mean, there were people that were, were large, but maybe having a million subscribers was a big deal then. Now you're like 10 million, 8 million, and getting millions, 100 million views a month. It just wasn't there yet. I, I was getting you know 800 views on the early videos, which is not a lot now, but to start, 800 views, then you know, like a thousand, then you're adding 2,000. And for me, it was just consistency of putting out a lot of content. It was every day I was putting out one or two videos because I would come, I'd wake up in the morning, think of an idea, film it, edit it, go to lunch, redo the same thing in the end, you know, at the second part of the day and put up another video. So it was just constantly coming up with content to put out there. And it just, it, it's been a slow and gradual growth over the years, but it's continued to grow. Wow, okay, and that's really impressive. So for some of our viewers that are watching, I feel like that idea of consistency is really tough when you're trying to run a business and you've got clients. Any like time management tips that you have for people and like how do you, what What's system time did you have? <laughs> What's a system? No, I did, my life was dedicated and devoted to making content. Right. Day in and day out, make content. Like, I get it that people are busy, but if you really want to create something, you need to be consistent at it. You can take five minutes and speak to a camera. You can take five minutes and talk to your phone. You can take five minutes, talk to a microphone and make a podcast. Make content, put stuff out into the world. You never know what's gonna take off. And it's not gonna be easy and it's not gonna happen in six months. It takes time to build, but you need to figure out what's working for you and then continue on just building. So when you say consistency, for you, you were doing it twice a day. Now, what are you, like five five videos a week four, or so? Four or five a week, depending. Uh, but I also do a daily podcast now. Uh, I call it The Daily Fro, and I just say whatever I want. It's a six to 16-ish minute me speaking whatever I want to say. It doesn't have to be photography. It's about anything. And that's the thing that people forget is it doesn't have to be just about your niche. You're a human being. Show the human element, the human side of it, and it can work. Um, consistency is important. You're not going to put, I, I don't think, if you're going to put out one video a week, some people do that and can be successful at it. I don't subscribe to that. I have never put out less than, I don't know, five, four, three. I don't know how many, I don't think I've ever done less than three videos in a week over eight years. You're not going to blow up out of nowhere off of four videos, in my opinion, unless, unless you're, unless you blow up and get a massive hit with something which is most likely not gonna happen because it's super rare, then you could follow up every week with something if that's your thing. If you wanna do it every Wednesday, then, then own it, do every Wednesday. But then other times during the week, put out other pieces of content that are easier. Seek questions from your followers or whoever's out there. What question, hey guys, what questions do you have about X? Even if you get three people to reply, make a video, answer the three questions in 10 minutes or less, put it out as an audio podcast and put it out as a video. But it's easy when you do user generated content because they're basically telling you what you're going to do and all you need to do is be the authority in that field and just do it. Amazing. Let's talk a little bit more about content ideas. So you you draw on your audience and your fans to help you with content ideas. Yeah. Just based on the questions they're asking you, how else do you come up with your ideas? Do you have an editorial calendar? Do you kind of just wake calendar. up with like... What's a calendar? <laughs> do you we wake have... up and just have inspiration of what you're going to talk about that day? Like how do you, how well, do you plan out what you're going to do? My team has me a little, a little more organized, not super organized at all, but we have ideas about what we want to focus on on this day. And you know, we were just upstairs now talking about we've got a new camera to review. There's four lenses that we got with it. So with those four lenses, we can go over to my store set that we built over here and we can do individual videos for each one of those lenses. And then you title it with lens review, 
and though and that's long form that's long tail content that lives for a long time because people are always searching out lenses lenses aren't replaced every five you know five six years and so people are continually looking for that piece of content that's not something that we expect to blow up huge right off the rip but people are going to continue to search that so that's a piece of content we can make so i get to go out and shoot maybe i'll go to the zoo take all the lenses and just make some content um we sort of have a calendar but it's really week by week it really is it's always been week by week and back when i started with just myself it was day by day what do i want to do today what idea do i have and it was just do it do you look at google trends like how do you kind of know what things people want to hear about so i attempted to do that back in the day i just couldn't focus on it okay. i mean it's a it's a great thing to do to know yeah. what people are looking for but I do something similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you ride the wave of what's popular right now, because you know what's going on in your niche, if it's yeah. photography, I know that there's a new camera coming out. I do a preview of that camera. It's a hot topic for the next week. It's going to get a lot of views. If I do a review of the photo, a critique of the photos from the royal wedding, thank you, Stephen, for waking up one morning and saying I should do that critique. I did that critique, and 150,000 views later, it's like, I did a critique of those photos and it was topical. So if stuff is topical, go with it. But also just think, what is searchable? You search YouTube, you search Google, what comes up, what do you like, and ride those trends. If you see somebody else doing something that's super popular, I'm not saying copy what they're doing, but when fidget spinners were the thing, associate fidget spinners with something else. I never did that <laughs> photo fidget spinner thing. I just, I hate riding some of those bullshit trends. Yeah. I just don't want to be like that, even though they would get views, but you want sometimes the right views. So uh, in terms of preparing for your videos, do you do any kind of scripting before to think about what you're going to talk about or is it kind of, you know? So there's certain types. Routine. We yeah. do a thing called photo news fix. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that I've done where it's, it's scripted. I write a script, Steven edits it, make sure I spell everything right, which I don't. And then it goes up on the prompter. Even if I spell it wrong, I still read it right just weird like that. So that, that we do off a teleprompter, but everything else has always been top of the head. Right. Um, but we do go over, you know, I will sit there with a piece of paper sometimes if I'm doing a preview of a lens and go, all right, I have some triggers on here and I don't have a problem sitting there with it on my lap. I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. If I mess up, I'm good with that. Keep going, just acknowledge it and, and keep moving on because it's real. Um, but most of the things aren't scripted. Right. And I think that not everybody's great in front of the camera. Um, and I'll give you guys my video from 2008, which I think you should show to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's part of the worst video I ever made. It's so good. I'm sitting in my basement at my, my, ho my dad's house and I fail for like 12 minutes attempting to do a video. And it's just continually failing, me starting. I, I say my name and I failed. Hello, I'm Jared Poland and welcome to ProPhoto101.com. Today I want to talk a little bit about, you know, I'd like to, today I'd like to go over some of the lenses that, the reason I, I put that video out later on was the fact that showing people that I was here, mm. this guy failing continually on camera for 15 minutes, and now I'm here. A switch went off one day and I was able to just sit in front of a camera and just spit it out yeah. there. And you can go back through all my videos. You can sit there and go oldest first and people can just sit there and watch the old videos to see the progression over the years. That's what's cool about YouTube. You can go back to any YouTuber as long as they haven't deleted their old mm -hmm. stuff and you can just go, holy shit, this is where they started. And they've really changed. So anybody can, you can figure it out. Yeah, so it's not, I think that's so inspiring because it's not like you were perfect from the beginning. It's just, you were so perfect consistent. perfect from the beginning. And you just had that many at bats until you, you know, you got to the point you're at now. Yeah, so many at bats. Well, you could, like, what do you have to lose? It doesn't yeah. cost you money to do YouTube. Yeah. See, that's one of the things that that it upsets me when people are like, I don't know what to do, and it's just like, <laughs> oh my God, I need to do this. Like, I have 125 million views over eight years. There's plenty of people that have more, yeah. but I, I've equated it to like, if you needed to do, if you were paying for ads. It would cost you anywhere between two to four cents per view on YouTube to do that. You're looking at two to four million dollars. Actually, it's more than that now with the tw extra 25 million. But could you imagine a company going and spending two to four million dollars in ads when you could build an organic stream? I mean, YouTube gives you the ability to put your stuff out into the world, doesn't charge you to host anything. Mm -hmm. You're talking about how many pet petabytes are they hosting now across the world of YouTube videos? 
It's free advertising. Make a video, put it out into the world. I love that. So as far as quality goes, I mean, you have all this fancy equipment, you know, fancy cameras. If I was starting from scratch and I wanted to grow a YouTube channel, how important is quality? I mean, what, what would you recommend that I start with? Well, it's all over the place. There are so many cameras today that aren't super expensive that give you the ability to do far more than what I was able to do when I started. Mm -hmm. I think the key is get a camera, get audio. Audio is probably more important than the quality of the video. If people can hear you and you don't have you know, wind in the background sound, then it's gonna come across better. I think people will watch a video that sounds good versus a video that looks great but sounds terrible. But if you don't have a ton of money, take out your iPhone. Get a, yeah. get a tripod for it. Get a plug-in microphone that could just run a wire up your shirt. I think Rode makes one of those. Okay. But you could pick up any $10 plug-in microphone yeah. to start with. Okay. As long as you're not over, and as long as you're not peaking your audio and going way, and it's too hot and it's just muffling, then just get started. You can figure out the rest later. Okay, great. So you're saying don't wait till you're perfect. Just put it out there, get the feedback, and you just kind of depends grow on the there. niche, of course. Yeah. It's it's hard to generalize to say what it is, but a lot of people have cameras today, whether it's a mirrorless camera or it's a DSLR or a cell phone, mm -hmm. just set it up on a tripod, play around, see what works. But if you're really investing in creating something, you could spend under a thousand bucks today to get started. Beautiful. So in terms of, you know, you started eight years ago, if you were to start over today, knowing nope. what you know now, not doing it. <laughs> do it. Uh, I, <laughs> Would I, would I start over today or what like, would I do like different? What would you do differently now, knowing what you know now and how the game has changed? The game's always changing. I don't think there's, I don't, one, I wouldn't want to have to do it again. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's not the easiest thing yeah. in the world to build something. Yeah. Um, I could if I really needed to focus on it and figure out what to do. Um, I think the most important thing is you, you get started and you iterate along the way. Yeah. You figure out what's working and you make the change. You don't, I, YouTube is a fickle thing. I think right now is the, the prime time, if you're gonna get started, to do it. Mm -hmm. It's the first time in a long time that YouTube has now have massive growth for new people. Hmm. Before, two years ago, it was pretty locked down and it was hard to, to get reach. But they've been tweaking their algorithm, which nobody, don't, don't even get started with the algorithm and worrying what that even is. It's just something that's always constantly changing. And now it's, it's giving favor to somebody that's new that can shoot out there pretty quick. If you get something that hits quick, that, that, that really rides the trend and it's really good, mm -hmm. and a lot of people watch it, you better follow it up with another good thing after it. And that can just snowball and build. There's a few examples of that happening, but again, you gotta understand that there's the 1% of the 1% that can get massive, and you don't need to be the biggest of the big to generate revenue and to figure out how to make money off mm -hmm. of it. So let's talk about making money on YouTube. How long did it take for you to actually be profitable on, on YouTube? And what was that game well, like? Well, that day that I sat there in the family room with my dad and said, Dad, I made 18 cents on YouTube today. <laughs> I felt great. I made 18 cents on the internet. Baller. Um, I think you don't start YouTube to make money. Right. Because it takes a while. Mm -hmm. you, but what you have to understand is that when you build the authority online and you get views, you have the ability to get people away from YouTube where you can make more money. Mm -hmm. Selling products, selling coaching if that's what you want to do, or having seminars if you get big enough to do that. Um, but just relying on making revenue on YouTube is not really going to happen for most people. I mean, I generate two plus million views a month that equates to not a terrible amount of money, but that would be maybe enough for you to live okay on. Yeah if you were able to do that on your own, just off of ads. But when you can sell your own products, when you can do sponsored posts and sponsored videos, because people pay you to make a piece of content, you're gonna make a shit ton more money off of that than you ever are, unless you're the biggest of the big. There's of course anomalies out there. None of this is, none of this is gospel. I do what works for me and what's worked for me over the years and what I continue to learn and figure out what to do. Doesn't mean that it's the right thing for everybody else, so you just try it. You have to try something, take something I've done and. If it doesn't work for you, try something else. Great. So let's talk about products then. So what, what other income streams do you have that are based off the business? You have some info products. Yeah, well, the first was t-shirts. I started nice. selling t-shirts uh, about 15 days after I launched the website because <laughs> that was a way of generating some kind of yeah. revenue. I, I shoot raw. I'd sit there and write 
everybody's name on the envelope and pack it myself and ship it out into the world. Awesome. So that was a piece of, uh, that was something that I did. I didn't sell something early on. I didn't make a, a product until 2012. It didn't come out until September of 2012, the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto, which was huge. It, it allowed me to buy my house, you know, put a down okay. payment down, which was great. Um, but I had spent the, the year, the two years leading up to that just giving away a ton of information, building up the credibility mm -hmm. so that the point when I put out something big, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. I didn't put this out three months after I started and watch it flounder. So do you want to kind of break down what your different income streams are? Sure. You, YouTube makes up, I don't know, 4% maybe okay. of a 4 or 5%. It's yeah. not a huge amount. Uh, the info products is a large percentage. Another percentage is uh, are the affiliate commissions off mm -hmm. of certain things, mm -hmm. because there's affiliate deals that I've worked out with other companies where if somebody signs up using my link, I get something back. Affiliate marketing is great because you don't, well, you create something and you're investing in yourself. Um, you've got ad uh, sponsored videos mm -hmm. where somebody comes to you and is a sponsor and they want you to create something. Uh, those are fun. Like you can work with Adobe or Rode. Uh, there's a lot of different companies that I work with and that's a great way to subsidize making content. Like if I'm traveling and I'm making a vlog and it could fit into Adobe's stock, the world of that because I'm traveling, well, it makes sense. We can make a video, they're sponsoring it, mm -hmm. but it's still organic content that's great and I get paid to travel and that's another source of income. So there's six, seven different okay. ways of generating revenue because at some point one of those is going to tank two of those is going to tank and you have to figure out what you can do to build up and make up for the lost revenue that you did off of that. In terms of you earn affiliate revenue from promoting other people's products, what percentage of the, when you sell your own info products, do you, do you have affiliates for those as well? Sometimes, uh, not a ton Yeah. because I'm very selective with who promotes the products. And a lot of the times the people that have come to promote the products are either just starting out and like, I'm just starting and I'm building and I'll get 12 people to look at it. And, it's, uh, you, you want the, the bigger affiliates, obviously. Um, when, with my first product, there was a huge website that decided to promote it and they moved a thousand sales, which was obviously a nice bump in sales when I was just starting out. Um, that's great when you can forge those relationships. If you can forge relationships with big people and get that big burst, it's better than spending you know, 20 people that maybe will sell one. But then with affiliate marketing, it doesn't matter if somebody can sell something, you just make revenue mm -hmm. off of it. I do, I've started in the last year or two working with other creatives in the photo community that have products that I haven't created that are different than what I've done that are things that are beneficial to my readers. And so we work out a deal where I promote their product and I do it just like a regular launch uh, where I make content to support it, good educational stuff, and then ask for the sale. And those have worked out really well. So if you have people in the market and they have something that you don't offer and I have something they don't offer, you can crisscross and they've got a big following and I've got a big following and it's, as long as you're delivering something good, you might as well try and sell it. So I understand you have a, a few people on your team now. When did you, what was your kind of tipping point for bringing people on and having that team, what has that afforded you to be able to do now? Yeah, so for the first four years, it was just me doing everything um, and some of the advice from other people that have built big businesses are like when you are when your time is being taken up by 70 percent of the things that you don't need to be doing find somebody else to do it uh, i had somebody that was working with me you sometimes don't find the right people right away uh, and then you just need to figure that out and find who's going to be the most beneficial for you um, so i added steven a couple years ago i think we're a little over three now almost four and it's just when you find the right people it makes your life a lot easier. I'm not setting up the lights or the cameras um, most of the time now, but the editing aspect of it. I was never an editor. Mm. I didn't know anything about editing when I started making my videos. All I knew was to put the, I put my intro on the front and I cut the ending off and that was it. I had five minutes to make the video. I, if I messed up, I kept going because I didn't know how to edit. Mm -hmm. So I would just, Having an editor is great. It makes your content that much better. We added a second editor who really focuses on just doing the editing. Steven helps me with shooting. He does audio, he does video, he does editing, he does everything. And that's been really beneficial to help create better content and also lighten my load on certain things that I was doing. I still shoot my own type of videos that I do, my, my critiques and uh, preview videos, and I'll edit them crappily my way. And Steven, you know, 
probably is like, eh, that sucked, you should have done better. I'm like, nah, whatever, I'll put it out, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, it, you just have to find the right people. So this has been amazing. Before we leave, uh, if people haven't been like totally demoral demoralized from watching this, if like, let's say I'm a, I'm a fitness coach, all right, and I wanna start promoting my business to get more clients on YouTube, what are like three just succinct pieces of advice you could give us? Well, one, start. Okay. Start putting stuff yeah. out. We I mean, talk about, people love lists. The top five ways to get abs. The top mm -hmm. ways to get six, because you want six. Or unless you want eight <laughs> abs, you can do eight abs. But a list of something. Mm -hmm. Or five better things you can eat for breakfast. I mean, show that you know what you're talking about. If you can break that stuff down, people are going to start following you. Come I, I love that lists. you're saying that, because you're not saying like you have to reinvent the wheel. Like, just give people what they want. Be yourself. Be yourself, I mean, be yourself is a, is a big thing. Yeah. Don't worry about messing up, but make sure your information isn't going to hurt somebody, especially in this, in that industry. Make sure you're putting out the right information, you're well thought out, you're educated on it, and put it out into the world. Okay, one more question, because yeah. you said be yourself. Yeah. Got Don't the be somebody thing else. going on. How important is the, do you think the brand is for your YouTube channel? Could I shave my head tomorrow and still do it? Yeah, yeah. I could. I, I, I make some videos when my hair's down and curly. A lot of the comments become, you know, what is this Jerry Curl nose photo or something? But it, it's not that. There's, a, there's, a, there's shticks. I mean, if, I, if this was just a shtick, I would have burned out six months into doing it. Yeah. And I wouldn't be eight years into making it. Um, at some point, I could cut the hair. Uh, I don't. I, I like it. I also like when it's down and curly. But yeah, you got to be, be who you are. If, if you try to fake it, people will see through that. There's a, there's a lot of fakers out there. There's a lot of fakers, you know, Lamborghinis in their driveways and, <laughs> and they rented it and all right that dead. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Super Jared. positive, right? <laughs> just try to get people. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want people to think that it's, it's, it's the easiest thing to do in the world, but I also want to encourage people to start yeah. something. If you have an idea, nobody is holding you back today. Mm -hmm. Now more than ever, you have the opportunity to take control of whatever it is you want to take control of and try it. If it doesn't work, you can go back to that job you had. If it does work, you've just created something else out of nothing. So believe in what you're doing, believe in yourself, and stick with it. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while to build, and some people can shoot up overnight, but it's going to take a minute. Yeah. It's gonna take a minute, so don't get discouraged if it's taking a minute, but also know when it's time to cut and try something else. Because this wasn't the first time I attempted to do this. I love it. All right, so just start, keep putting stuff out there, be yourself. And don't suck. And don't suck. I love it. It's great being here. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. You're welcome. This has been great. Thanks for coming to All the right. factory. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and then go watch more of our content. Okay, now click.